Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the hydroxyl functional group. This is going to be the first video in a series of episodes where I go over a handful of the most important biological function groups. You'll see a lot of these if you ever end up taking organic chemistry, so today I'll try to introduce you to the topic. Before we get started, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of my new videos. With that being said, let's get started. Since this is the first video, I'm going to briefly explain why functional groups are so important. Let's say you have this molecule. Some of you might recognize it as ethane. What type of bonds do you see? Well, these bonds right here, highlighted in orange, are all CH bonds. I'll make a video in the future explaining bonds, but for right now, all you need to know is that this is a nonpolar bond. What this means is that it doesn't have any partial charges, and that's a problem. You see, biological molecules, or biomolecules, rely on partial and full charges for bonding. That only happens if you have partial or full charges on these molecules, like the positive and negative charge. If you don't have them, you can't expect any bonding to occur. So, of course, that's not ideal. What we want is for there to be some charges so that this molecule up here, the ethane, can bond with other biomolecules. And that's exactly what functional groups are for. They introduce partial and full charges to other molecules. So let's see what that actually looks like, starting with the hydroxyl group. The hydroxyl group is an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen atom. It looks like this. Now, remember, oxygen forms two bonds, so in reality, you'd have something over here attached to the oxygen making two bonds. Now, this R could be anything. It could be another atom, another functional group, or even a complete molecule. It really doesn't matter for the purpose of this video. What does matter is that this oxygen atom right here forms two bonds, and one of those is with this hydrogen atom right over here. Now, you've probably seen this before because it comes up quite frequently in biology. If you take a look at H2O, you can see two of them. One OH group right here and another OH group right here. So, what's so special about water? Well, remember, water forms hydrogen bonds. That's what makes it so special. All of those special properties of water, like high specific heat, universal solvent, surface tension, all of those come from its hydrogen bonds. Now, to be clear, these right here are not hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are intermolecular forces, which means they form between different molecules. So, for example, if I had another water molecule right here, then the hydrogen bonds would actually form between this hydrogen on that water molecule and this oxygen with this water molecule. So this would actually be a hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bond forms between the partially positive charged hydrogen atom and the partially negative charged oxygen atom. Remember, if any of this is new information, make sure to check out my videos on water structure and polarity. Links in the description below. So going back to our hydroxyl group, we can see that if the ethane molecule had a hydroxyl group, let's say instead of this hydrogen atom, it would be able to form hydrogen bonds with other molecules. Okay, so if you take a look here, I've drawn another molecule and notice here that it has a carbon double bonded to an oxygen atom. Now remember, oxygen is a very electronegative element. When it forms bonds with carbon, those bonds are polar. They have partial charges, so the oxygen carries a partial negative charge and the carbon carries a partial positive charge. Okay, so what did we say about hydrogen bonds earlier? The partial positive hydrogen atoms of one molecule form hydrogen bonds, like right here, with the partial negative oxygen atoms of another molecule. 
So what we've done here is we formed this bond between these two molecules, and that's really important because it allows chemistry to occur on a macroscopic level. So without bonding, we can't have these reactions. So this right here is very good. The hydroxyl functional group allows us to do this. It allows these two molecules to bind with each other. So that's why they're so important. I hope this was a good intro to functional groups. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Make sure to like the video if you want to support the channel and I'll see you in the next video.